Last year, I was lucky enough to be the first person in the world to test the brand new Eagle F1 Supersport against its main rivals. At that time, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S was regarded as an unbeatable UHP tyre, but in my test, the F1 Supersport just took it, largely thanks to its wet performance. How does that very close balance of performance translate to the real world? Well, to find out, I've got a set of the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and the Eagle F1 Supersport in E92 M3 sizes, and I'm going to do a couple of thousand miles on each set of tyres in all conditions, on all surfaces, at all temperatures, to really try and build on that test in the real world to see which tyre performs best overall. Before I start, there's one question I always get asked, and I know I'll get shot if I don't answer it, and that is, which has the stiffest sidewall? And in this, it's very close, but the F1 Supersport just feels like it has a bit more bracing on the shoulder. And the tread cap is just a ever so slightly stiffer. So in theory, it should offer the better feedback and handling, but Michelin do something very clever with their tires construction. They always seem to be able to make a tire that feels a little bit softer, but still gives you excellent feedback and handling. So it's gonna be a really interesting test. I'm gonna go and do a lot of driving over the next couple of months and hopefully the next part of this video will make sense and have some real world feedback about which of these two tires are the very best at what. Okay, first things first, the astute of you will have noticed I'm not sitting in my E92 M3. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know why. It decided it didn't want a car anymore. Luckily, Goodyear have stepped up and lent me their rather subtle M2 competition, which is a lovely car for doing this kind of test. So I did about 500 miles on the M3, and to be honest, that M3, as you'll see in the build series, because the car is being relocated to Mara, so we are gonna actually be building it into a track weapon this year, as promised last year, but life just got in the way. It's just a little bit too sad and floppy to really do this sort of tire test, where the M2 here is super tight, super direct, and you get all the feeling through the tire that you need. The M3 will get there, but as a really cheap M3, it's just not there at the moment. Anyway, the tires. I can keep this video really short. The average driver will notice very few differences between the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S and the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersport. What they'll probably notice is the Goodyear steers a little bit quicker, the Michelin is a little bit more comfortable, and that's about it. So if that's the case, go and buy whichever tire is cheaper in your region or whichever tire you like the look of the sidewall better. However, I'm assuming you're not the average driver, which is why you're watching this channel. So I'm gonna go into a bit more detail. In the dry, the first thing you notice when switching between the two tires is the Michelin is a little bit more comfortable. It rounds off the bumps and crashes a little bit better, like low speed potholes, which is quite noticeable. And on most surfaces, it's a tiny bit quieter. Conversely, that means the general steering feel you get through the steering wheel is a little bit less granular on the Michelin. It's just, it feels a little bit muted compared to the Goodyear, and the Goodyear just feels really granular and grainy and chatty, like it really wants you to know what's going on. Steering speed, as I said in the introduction, the Goodyear builds up the steering force more quickly. So as you're turning, the, the tire builds up slip angle and load more quickly. So the car feels more pointy and more darty, but conversely, while the Michelin's a tiny bit slower to steer and a tiny bit lighter to steer, you can place the car a little bit easier on the Michelin because the steering force builds up in a more linear manner, which is really important for steering as well. So it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other when it comes to steering feel. The Goodyear, a little bit quicker and a little bit heavier. It feels a bit more sporty to steer, but the Michelin's a little bit more progressive and grown up and it's slightly easier to place the car. As you start getting to the limit, something interesting happens. Where the Goodyear gives you that lovely granular steering feel and it lets you really know what's going on at lower speeds, as you get to the sort of the nine tenths, like no faster than you would go on the road, so the kind of like quick roundabout speed, we shall call it, as this is a real world test, the Goodyear starts to give up a little bit of that information and just starts switching to understeer a little bit sooner than the Michelin. And it comes in in a really progressive manner, which is nice and safe, but it doesn't quite communicate it as much as you want, which is a little bit of a shame. I would say that's the only drawback of the Goodyear in the dry. Conversely, switch that around to the rear axle, the Goodyear wants to play more because it does everything a little bit slower, builds up slip a little bit slower than the Michelin. It allows you to steer the car on the throttle a little bit more, where you're a little bit hesitant on the Michelin because it feels like maybe the ultimate level of grip's a little bit higher. So when it goes, it goes 
more quickly, the Goodyear just allows you to slide a little bit more, which is, it's good fun. It's, it's a fun tire. On the brakes, both cars feel pretty much identical. Uh, I would say the Michelin maybe feels a tiny bit more positive on the brakes, but we're talking really small amounts. Both tires remarkable in the dry on the brakes. And to be fair, both tires offer just mind bending amounts of grip in this M2. Like you wouldn't be sad with either of the tires in the dry. In the wet, for a real world objective test, I just can't give any authoritative data. Go back and look at the objective test I've already shot that's got wet data because on the road, you simply can't push each tire hard enough. Having said that, there is some slight differences. Like in the dry, the Michelin does feel a little bit stronger on brakes, a little bit stronger on the front axle, and the Goodyear feels a little bit stronger in traction. But again, like in the dry, both tires offer really good feedback. There's less of a difference between the feedback of the two tires because the forces are lower and you don't push as much in the wet but both tires do absolutely mind-bending things in the wet. Like you can't believe the grip. At points it just feels like it's still dry. So both tires in the wet, you're not gonna be disappointed with either of them. Regarding warm-up of the tires, well, again, I would say the Michelin feels a little bit more ready to go from the off. So it doesn't really feel like it needs any heat, but a lot of the time the Goodyear feels like that as well and they're both so close but as we've proven on the M2 testing on track in the Texas heat of 45 50 degree heat the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport did feel near impossible to overheat on track and that's very good for a fast road tire because a lot of fast road tires do get a little bit warm and a little bit squidgy if you do want some objective wet data i'll leave a link in the description to the tire reviews website and the m2 video go check that out because we did proper wet testing with braking handling and aquaplaning so that's the one that's going to really tell you how they perform and as a bit of a spoiler the goodyear had a significant advantage in wet handling and especially aquaplaning at the rear the water channels in the rear of the goodyear is just a little bit wider on the michelin and then during the wet handling in uvalde in texas where we did the test the goodyear had less issues aquaplaning at the rear which meant less oversteer which meant a faster lap time so that's a bit of a spoiler overall now i've done 1500 miles on each set of tires on the road they are so close the michelin feels like a bit more of a grown-up sports tire in that it's a little bit more mature it feels a little bit more serious there's a little bit more comfort to it and there's a little bit less noise but is that really what you want from a sports tire the goodyear feels like a chatty teenager in comparison it's constantly giving you information through the steering wheel apart from at the very limit at the front and it's always trying to provoke you into having fun which is kind of what you want from a, a, a sports tire for a performance car and on this m2 it's a really good match so which is the better tire well i think now i've done all these miles on the road <laughs> if you put a gun to my head I'd probably say the Michelin has slightly got the edge. But which tyre would I buy if I was driving this M2? Uh, this is how close it is. Maybe the Goodyear, just because it's a little bit more fun. I know that doesn't make sense, because the Michelin is probably slightly better overall, but I just want a sports car like this to be fun and to be playful, and the Goodyear gives you that slightly more than the Michelin. But remember what I said at the start of this video, the gaps between these two tires are so incredibly close, you will be happy with either set. You can go and fit either set, fit whatever's cheapest, fit whatever you like on the sidewall, fit whichever brand you're more loyal to. You will be happy with either of them. And this, let's not forget the Continental Sport Contact 6, which is the Continental. They're the holy trio of the tires that are amazing in these kind of categories. So. It's a good time to be alive and it's a good time to be testing tyres because they're all really good and they're all really good fun to drive. If you enjoyed this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. I will be doing the M3 build this year, assuming this pandemic doesn't uh, delay things too badly. Fingers crossed. If you've got any questions, ask below or any more videos you want to see, feel free to let me know in the comments below. As always, I do my best to answer every comment that I can. Um, and as always, safe motoring.